We got some discipline being handed down today by Major League Baseball for today's Tuesday's brawl between the Reds and the Pirates. And all, both managers, six players, three per side, suspended and fined. And the number of other players were also fined for their roles in the incident. All six suspended players have elected to appeal. Here is the full list of discipline. Keone Keller received the longest suspension, 10 games. He's a reliever for throwing at the head of Derek Dietrich. Amir Garrett got eight games for rushing the Pirates dugout and initiating the ball. <laughs> <laughs> that was gangster. That was and nice. for the managers, David Bell, who had already been ejected from the game, got six games, and Clint Hurdle, well, he got two. Joe Torrey, the dean of discipline, laying down the law. What message do you think he sent with these suspensions, and who got what, more importantly? Well, Mike, here is the clear distinction for me. Keone Kala gets ten games. Amir Garrett gets eight. So... In the mind of Joe Torre, it was worse to have thrown a pitch at the head of Derek Dietrich and miss than it was for Garrett to actually run at the dugout and initiate the fracas that we saw. And I think, Nick, it's a really important point that MLB, Joe Torre, and certainly the baseball operations, and I'm sure a lot of the players realize in the game right now, this is happening far too often. I agree. And, and they see that initial event that catalyzed this entire episode of throwing high and just barely missing Dietrich's head mm. as being the worst of all the offenses that particular night. Well, you got to remember, with where velocity is now in the game, I mean, you could literally kill somebody. Like, I hate even using that word, but, like, something really, really bad can happen. Severely hurt. I think there needs to be an underlined rule and, and, and an unwritten rule that if you're going to hit somebody, and Joe Torre's making it a great point, that it better not be up in this general direction right here. Mm -hmm. It better be down low here, and like in the hips and the legs and the backsides. That is more fair. And, and you can take 100 to the ribs. It's still going to hurt. But at the end of the day, at least you, you know, you're protecting a lot of important things up here on the upper half of your shoulder. And sometimes sure. pitchers, managers will say, well, that one just got away. How do you determine intent? Well, it's a great question, Mike. And I think that's where you've got Joe Torre with all his years of in the game. Yep. Uh, he understands the umpires file their reports. They usually have a pretty good indication, and Nick knows this, of, of the way that they're viewing things. Umpires usually know what's on purpose and what's not. But, Mike, to your question, the onus right here by this discipline is being placed on the managers, mm -hmm. because it's hard to legislate intent, right. to put legislation in actual written words there. But this is one thing I saw in, in the news release that MLB put out today that was in my inbox that I read, and this stood out to me. I'll, I'll read this here. Okay. The incidents between these two clubs remain a source of concern, and it's reflected by the level of discipline we are handing down today. Here's the key sentence. I firmly expect these two managers mm. and all others to hold their players accountable for appropriate conduct and to guide them in the right direction. End quote. I had an MLB source, Mike, tell me that that wording there, uh -huh. referring specifically to the managers, was not an accident. They, right. they realized that they're somewhat constrained in what they could do in terms of creating new rules. They're saying, listen, managers, you guys have to police the players. You have to know when to put a stop to it because for the managers, Mike, and, and Nick knows this too, the economics of the game, a six-game suspension and a fine for a manager in terms of the wallet is, is a pretty big percentage <laughs> yeah. for them relative to a player. And I think from that, from that standpoint, Nick, and you know this, the managers, you kind of know, wink and a nod, when a pitcher's thrown at somebody or not, and right. the manager has ultimate say-so, hey, guys, this ends now. And that's what Joe Torre is saying the managers have to do. Yeah, there's no doubt. I mean, he's definitely putting a lot of emphasis, emphasis on the manager, the strength of the manager, right, to be able to handle his team. Because at the end of the day, we can't have our managers duking it out. I mean, yeah, for a minute, it'd be kind of fun to watch. But at the end of the day, we're, we're, we have a brand. Major League mm -hmm. Baseball has a brand. And if we have our managers and our leaders of the game, right, you know, participating in things like this, that can't happen. Like I always say, man, that ain't it. But these two teams have a history of something that happened in April, Keller, of course, and there's always these unwritten rules. The players got to be players. You got to retaliate. If somebody throws at one of the batters, the other pitcher, the other team has to throw at it. When does it stop? When does it stop? Does a fine make it stop? Does a big suspension like this make it stop? When does it stop? Well, I think, Mike, it has to happen culturally. And, and Nick knows this from, from playing recently and now being involved in, and of seeing minor league players and the way the game has changed culturally. The old school mentality of retribution, because this, of course, goes back, as you see it there, to April uh, when Dietrich admired a, a home run off of Chris Archer and then there was retaliation then. If we're going to let the kids play, as the marketing slogan says from MLB, now that comes from Major League Baseball, let the kids play. So if that's the, the law of the land, if that's the tone that's set mm -hmm. from the commissioner's office 
marketing, we talk about marketing young stars. Right. If we want to let them show their personality and show their joy on the field, sometimes maybe there is some offense taken. But I think, Nick, and you see that the game evolve. I think the modern player has to realize some degree of that is going to be okay, and the old old style of retribution right. simply is dangerous, mm -hmm. and also it's it's counterproductive, 100%. in my opinion, to growing the game. Yeah, and you're so right. But you got to also remember with the with the youthful boom that we have in our game, the youthful players we have, they grew up around the game differently, right? Mm -hmm. They don't think about the first thing is drilling somebody. That is something that has been part of the game for a long time, and I think it's starting to move its way out of the game. There's still a lot of obviously old school guys in our game and the whole nine, but. You you got to remember, these new guys that have come up, they've played without any contact at second base. They've played with any contact without the catcher, mm -hmm. right? So if these guys aren't used to that contact, right, you're not going to see as many guys getting drilled as you, will, as you, as you were back in the day. Andy. There's no doubt about that. I think it also has a little bit to do with each organization and maybe the way they go about things. And, and they're making a lot of money these days. They've been making it for a long course, period of time. Of it's dangerous to throw at somebody's head, but it's also dangerous to charge somebody else's dugout. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah, right? Very, but he ain't scared. I'm very I got it. Scared, me, bro. Man, that was one of the craziest <laughs> things I've ever seen on a baseball diamond.